All right, good morning and welcome to this week's edition of Encompass Live. I am your host, Krista Porter, here at the Nebraska Library Commission. Uh, Encompass Live is the Commission's weekly webinar series where we cover a variety of topics that may be of interest to libraries. We broadcast the show live every Wednesday morning at 10 a.m. Central Time, but if you're unable to join us on Wednesdays, that's fine. We do record the show as we are doing today and it will be posted on our website in our archives for you to watch at your convenience. Both the live show and the recordings are free and open to anyone to watch. So please share with your uh, friends, family, neighbors, colleagues. Um, here at the Nebraska Library Commission, we are the state agency for libraries in Nebraska. So we provide services to all types of libraries. So we have shows on Encompass Live that may be um, for all types of libraries, uh, public, academic, school, uh, corrections, museums, archives, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, really anything and everything. Really our only criteria is something is that it's something to do with libraries. We do book reviews, interviews, mini training sessions, demos of services and products all sorts of things. Uh, we sometimes have Nebraska Library Commission staff come on and do presentations for us about programs and services we offer through the commission. And we also bring in guest speakers sometimes. And today we have a mixture of that, I would say, yes. Um, um, yeah. <laughs> Um, today we're going to be talking about, as you can see here, well, I'm not going to be, they are, uh, Letters About Literature, uh, Nebraska's uh, writing contest for um, students in Nebraska. Uh, and uh, we have three people who are involved in it to our commission staff. One is um, Richard is, uh, Miller is on the um, a board member of the Nebraska Center for the Book and a former Nebraska Library Commission staff member too. <laughs> um, but I will hand it over to you all to introduce yourself and tell us all about our Nebraska's Letters About Literature and what we're doing this year. So I'm Tessa Terry. I work at the Nebraska Library Commission as our communications coordinator and I help run the Letters About Literature contest. I'm Richard Miller. I am on the board of the uh, Nebraska Center for the Book. I currently serve as secretary. I'm Sally Snyder and I work at the Library Commission. I'm the coordinator of Children and Young Adult Library Services and I am a judge for Letters About Literature. So we'll just get started. Um, Richard's gonna talk a little bit about the Nebraska Center for the Book in general and why we have this competition. Can we switch to the Nebraska Center for the Book website? Yeah. All right. Okay. Drive a little bit there. We're going to uh, go through a few things about the Nebraska Center for the Book for you to look at. We are on the, the website for Nebraska Center for the Book. The reason we're doing this is because Letters About Literature is one of the programs of the uh, Nebraska Center for the Book. Can we get that out of the way so I can get to some See that things over here? There. That red arrow. there? Yes. All right. Thank you. Very good. The Nebraska Center for the Book is a 501c3 organization, a not-for-profit organization. Currently, we have 19 board members, and we're going to look a little bit at the website. If I click in here, will that go away? All right. Okay. The uh, the organization supports programs that uh, that celebrate and stimulate public interest in books, reading, and the written word. And we're going to look a little bit at their website. If we click on about here, you can see about the history, uh, the mission statement, which I'm not going to read to you. There's a list of the board members and then committees and members of those uh, committees. And there's contact information. Um, the uh, Nebraska Center for the Book is an affiliate of the Library of Congress's Center for the Book. John Cole used to be at the Center for the Book at the Library of Congress and used to travel all over the country and starting these up. And he really did a, an excellent job of, of helping them get started. Under the News tab here, uh, there's a mention of the NCB News, which Tessa edits. And so uh, you could go there and find out whatever the Center for the Book is doing. And there's kind of a summary of what's been in past issues of the NCB News. It's really handy. You should sign up. You should become a member and you should receive this because it's very informative. Tessa does an excellent job. Under the resources, there are a good number of resources for you as a librarian that I think would be useful to you. As you can see, there are book lists, there's reader information, writers, kids information, teens. I won't read through all those, but there are excellent links there, which I think Tessa keeps up to date so we don't have any dead links or 
let her know if there are any. Um, under awards, um, these awards, the Jane Keschke Award, the Mildred Bennett Award, uh, and the Nebraska Book Awards are going to be uh, given again at the uh, annual celebration of the book, which takes place on October 22nd at the Nebraska History Museum. You have to come and find out who the award winners are in this, in this first one. I believe the Nebraska Book Awards are posted ahead of time, right? Do they not? Yep. They're posted ahead of time. There are awards for children's books, youth books, uh, nonfiction books, cover and illustration, uh, cover and design illustration. There are a good number of nonfiction categories that we usually award in, and we also uh, award poetry uh, books for their awards. And I think we're going to move the poetry awards up this year. So I think at my request, so I can watch them. <laughs> I don't have to be out pouring wine. I want to be first, though. Under programs, you will find information on Nebraska Letters About Literature, which we'll be talking about in more detail today. One Book, One Nebraska, the Nebraska Book Festival, which I don't believe happened last year, but it's supposed to happen this coming year. No, nope, it's been on hiatus with COVID, but we are looking to have it in 2023. So. Very good. The annual meeting of the Nebraska uh, Center for the Book takes place at the same time that the uh, celebration of Nebraska books occurs. And what also occurs during the celebration of Nebraska books is that all those awards, which you just saw, are granted at that point, and a good number of the authors or editors attend that and read from the book. So if you have an opportunity to come to that, please do. It's really fun. And there's free food. So you might as well come. And I mentioned the NCB newsletter. You can find a link there for that. Um, I think that's free to sign up for that, is it not? To get it from you? To be you? a member? No. Oh, you have to be a member of the Nebraska Center for Book? Pardon me. It's not very costly. Join, one and all. All right, that's all I want to say at this point, and then let's just have Tessa talk about letters about literature. All right, back to our slides. So letters about literature, what is it if you haven't been involved? We'll just do a really quick overview. It's a state reading program that happens here in Nebraska. There are other states that have their own um, letters about literature competitions for their um, school students, but this is ours, and it's all done here in Nebraska. It's for readers, um, grades four through 12, and those are broken out into three different groups so you don't have fourth graders competing against 12th graders. Good. And the goal of it is to get these students to do some reflective writing and learn some communication skills about writing letters. So they are to pick a book or an author that has really impacted their life or changed their view of the world. And we want them to write a letter to that author telling them how their work has um, changed their life or impacted their, their world or how they see the world. It can be any genre, fiction, nonfiction. It can be a living or a dead author. It can be poetry. It, we um, are really open to the different genres and we just want them to explain how that author's work has changed their life. Here are the details about the contest. We ask students to submit their letters between October 1st and December 31st. And that's new this year. We actually changed the submission date from November to October. We thought um, we had some teachers ask us for a longer submission period, especially with all the holidays in November and December and all the student break time. So we gave them an extra month to have some extra letter writing time and editing time and reading time for finding the perfect book and author. Here we have our different grade levels. Level one is for grades four through six. Level two is for middle grades seven and eight. And level three is for high school students, nine through 12. And then our theme, it's the same every year. How did an author's work change your view of the world or yourself? So that's a really important point that sometimes gets missed by the letter writers, but that's what we're really aiming to hear about. 
We've got a lot of ways people have been involved in the past or you guys can get involved now. Um, specifically for librarians, they can partner with classrooms and teachers to help them find the perfect book. They can um, have clinics at their library. Um, they can share the LAL materials with your library users. I know a lot of homeschool groups use libraries. They have a lot of after school programs at libraries around the state. So just getting materials into students' hands or parents' hands would be a great help to us. And we have bookmarks we can send you as well if you're looking for some easy handout material for kids. One thing I love the idea of is challenging adults, parents, or teachers to write their own letter as examples for the students. Letters. But don't submit those. No, don't submit your letters. <laughs> but it's a great way to show kids, you know, what you're looking for. This isn't a book report, and that um, that's a great way to just give them a good example of what reflective writing looks like. If you have writing groups in your town or community, they would be really good for mentors or college classes that are doing creative writing. Homeschool groups, we talked about that, or you could host a letter writing clinic, which we have um, resources for on our website. And that just involves having a group of kids that are willing to get together and talk about the books you might pick for this, have a chance as a group to talk about their letters and themes and their authors and just kind of work through that as a group and not just individually. So we're gonna hop over to the Nebraska Center for the Book website so we can walk through how you submit your letters. We've tried to make it as simple a process as possible. And we have a link on our webpage for it. One thing to mention is students that are under the age, oh, this is old. Under the age of 13, as of October 1st, 2022, their parents need to um, legally consent to submit their letter. So we have a place on the application where we get the parents' e-signature. And then all, some, all of your submitted letters become the property of the Nebraska Center for the Book. And that just means that um, we will post them on the website. Um, we we don't return your letters afterwards so if you want to keep a copy of them that's important too but we do know that a lot of these letters can have really personal um themes in them so if a student was ever to not want their letter shared publicly we would be open to that too So if we go to the Letters About Literature webpage on the Center for the Book site, we have a lot of great information on here. One of them is the 2022 guidelines for the contest, and this is a PDF that has the submission dates and the age levels. It also has some great information about what we're looking for in a letter and how students can start to think through that process. We've got the submission link. And then we also have some entry um, and letter details about what the judges are looking for. And we're gonna go over that a little more in depth with our two judges. But that all that information is here on your guidelines. To submit, we have a nice big submit button. Can't miss it. Can't miss it. And it will take you to this simple Google Doc we want um, the school name, if it's a home school, put that in. We're just looking for some contact information. Um, we don't ask for the student's contact information. We get the school and teacher contact information or a parent or guardian contact information if they're homeschooled. Or library. Or library. Yeah. This could be a librarian's information as well. We're just looking for um, an adult to contact, essentially, if that student wins the student's first and last name. Here's the information on the student's age. And once again, if they're under the age of 13 by October 1st, 2022. That has the right date. Yeah, that, this one has the right date. <laughs> um, we just need a parent's e-signature here to make sure that 
they're comfortable having their students' work submitted on an online website. Grade level, which one you fall into, your specific grade because they break down um, a little differently in here. And then here's where we either want a teacher's name, parent guardian, or a librarian, um, somewhere in who you want to be contacted if this student wins, this is where that information goes. It's generally a teacher or a librarian or a parent. The author they're writing to, the title of the book, and then submit your letter. So our letters, we would like them to be typed and in a PDF format so that they can't be edited. Um, we don't want um, Word documents nothing like that, um, so that the student's letter stays exactly the way they submitted it. Um, we also ask that you put your first and last name for the student and the grade or the competition level that they are submitting in. So for example, John Smith level three. Just makes it really easy for us to organize the letters once they come in. But you can just click here and it takes you to a Dropbox website, and then you just click Submit. If there are any troubles, my information is on the Nebraska Center for the Book website, and you can easily contact me if you have any issues. So, I'm going to hand it over to Richard and Sally. They're both judges. Richard judges for the level three and Sally does level one judging, but they're just going to talk a little bit as judges about what they really look for in a letter. And Krista, if we have any questions pop up, feel free to uh, pass those through. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. If anybody does have any questions, type into the questions section of your GoToWebinar interface um, and I can grab those questions from there for anybody. Yeah. Well, I'll talk a little bit about being one of the two judges for the um, level one, or grades four to six group. And we do look at grammar and um, spelling. spelling. Thank you. Yeah. We also look for originality, as it says, because we we're hoping that the right the person who's writing this has really done some reflecting, as T Tessa mentioned. So we want to know, you know the author and the book that affected them, how it affected them, how do they, how, what has changed in the way they see the world or themselves, as you said. And for my group, this is more often lost in the excitement of having read this great, exciting adventure book, and the writers will say, oh, I love the part where this happened, and this was so exciting, and I didn't expect this to be the ending, but boy, you did a great job. And they forget about the part where we said, how did this affect you, you know, beyond? Very, I'm so glad you enjoyed the book. Yes, that's wonderful, but we're really looking for a little bit re more of a reflection in there. And um, so this is something we, that's like more in depth, different than just a, a typical book report. Yes. You know, for a book report, yeah. It is not a book report. You book are right. reports are thrown out. <laughs> <laughs> well, they're enjoyed, the letters are enjoyed, but they're, they're set aside for yeah. the most part because we're, that's why that um, box is there with, you know, how did this affect you? And we've had some wonderful letters from, I remember one from a, a girl who talked about her uncle and how she didn't really understand what he had been going through till she read this book that made it easier for her to understand what had been happening for her uncle. He had post-traumatic stress disorder and from being in combat. And she could get it from this book. And that was such a wonderful, way of look this book helped her understand the world and also her uncle and so that that kind of thing is just very i'm tearing up <laughs> it's, it's, <laughs> when, when somebody hits the nail on the head it really uh, affects yeah, yeah. i think in good. i think in the case i i look at uh, letters coming on the third level which is ninth through 12th grade i work with uh and have worked the last number of years with charles johannesmeyer who is uh professor at UNO and who teaches composition. Well, in my past life, I was a ninth grade English teacher and I tend to be a stickler about grammar and spelling. 
And he got me to relax a little bit more about that because not that you don't want to have the best grammar and spelling that you can, but what is more important is this reflective sort of thing that Sally is talking about. How has it really affected you? So we have really interesting letters that come in. I guess the thing that I would see on the on the level three is that some kids tend to feel that they have to write in a professional manner. And <laughs> typically they will come up with words or structure that really is, you can tell it's beyond their ability. So we're not looking for people who are going to show off. We're looking for people who are going to be reflective and say how it has affected them, their view of the world, and so forth. And uh, both uh, Tessa and Sally mentioned those those boxes with sort of guidelines in them. Before I start judging the letters, I just read through these to, con to uh, kind of focus myself when I'm looking at the letters. That's really useful both for the students and for you if you're working with students or, or uh, kids in your library. I think the reason we have the word students on the website is because we have those grade levels. So that's reflective of, of uh, of being students, but we also have probably the greatest majority of the letters come in from teachers who are working with students. Uh, but again, we'd love to see other people send in those things as well. Some teachers in the past have done this as a class project and they've had the entire class do the letters. They don't necessarily send all those letters in. They do some winnowing, I think. And, and that's certainly workable too. I guess that's it on that topic. One of the things that um, when we were chatting yesterday, Tessa mentioned, which I think is, is a good point, is we're not looking for a first draft of a letter. It's not like, you know, the, the student is over there, write your letter, now I'm sending, submitting it, because the teacher can work with the teacher or the parent if they're homeschooled or, or, or a friendly neighbor can help the, the child or teen work through their letter and better organize it or, or you know what do you mean by this because i don't think this is clear those kinds of things are yeah. not considered cheating so please don't worry about yeah. that <laughs> yeah we we kind of assume that if they're doing this as a school project that a teacher has had a chance to read a first draft letter and help that student um maybe edit edit it or um hone in on something and better explain a point um so yeah, we, we're, we're definitely okay with that. We, we think that is a good process and that's a learning process for students on how to, you know, take their writing and expand on it and get make it better and better. And that's one of the things I like about this program that they can be in fourth grade to 12th grade. So if you submit a letter in the fourth grade and it doesn't win, we really hope you keep submitting a letter every year until you're a, 12th grader and just to see that child's um, writing ability and letters just grow with them um, that's really one thing we love to do so keep trying if you submit it as a fourth grader and you don't win that's okay try again next year your writing is just going to get better and better and um, that's one of the really fun things about this program Tessa, could you go back to those resources that show the teaching guide and reflective writing assessment thing? I don't think we've been there yet. On the website. All right. So we have a lot of resources. I wanted to point out to you in particular, um, the resources, there's one called Teaching Guide and another called Reflective Writing Assessment. Both of these are quite extensive uh, things to look at, but you might like to scan through that for ideas as well. The one called Reflective Writing Assessment was written by a woman at the Library of Congress who used to be, when the Library of Congress kind of handled this on the national level rather than kicking it back to the states, she was uh, kind of there their writing expert about this whole thing. So there's some ideas in there about reflective writing in case you don't know exactly what we're talking about that might be useful to read through. Yeah. But they're very long, I will warn you. They're both <laughs> very long. 
yes, they're they're in depth, but they're really good resources to explain the difference between um, reflective writing and a book report. And and I know um, a lot of work's been done just about the the benefit of journaling for students and for mental health and to just get your ideas down on paper. So this is kind of an extension of that. Of yes. we want. Um, we want to hear their inner thoughts, their emotions, and how um, their lives have been shaped by the books they read. So, make it personal. Yeah, the person. <laughs> that's, a good, that's a good thing. And people, journaling is a huge thing now. People, you know, libraries are teaching it, schools are doing it. It's 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 big other. I think that that's because this seems to be the the biggest part that the writers, the children seem to miss is that a you know self assessment and you know reflectiveness of it. Um, but they may have heard of journaling and done th that and realize, oh, it's the same thing. <laughs> yes, it's very similar to journaling. Um, and we also think the letter portion of it is an important skill too. Yeah. How often do we write letters? Is it something um, that the kids know how to do well? Mm -hmm. That the communication skill of being able to put their thoughts down on paper and be able to send that out to someone is a really important skill that we want to encourage in students and i think it's been lost yeah <laughs> to tell you the truth do you remember when we were in in grade school and high school they teach us how to do a business letter how to do a personal mm -hmm. letter what you put in the heading where you put the date all that sort of thing i don't think anybody teaches that anymore to tell you the truth. i don't know what we all use it for anymore besides i mean the only kind of letter writing i can think of that might be a regular thing that we do as adults nowadays is um like cover letters for job applications or things exactly like that. i helped somebody just a couple weeks ago applying for a job who didn't know the structure of a business letter one of the things that some teen librarians are doing now is something called um life skills classes mm -hmm. and yes. so they'll teach the group of teens how do you open a bank account how do you handle your bank account or things like that how do you rent an apartment how, what you might be a checkbook. how to yeah. balance your checkbook and this is one that they could have in there as you know you might need a, a, a letter for your job application you need to know how to write a letter and if it's the right time of year they could they mm -hmm. could do it anyway but um they could actually work on uh, letters about literature as their as their letter that they've written on that yeah i was going to ask you to talk um, about you did it we hey, were, we hey. the same thing there's something under this uh slide that uh, tessa has up here right now under persuade uh toward the end of this it says uh this is not a fan letter every once in a while we'll get a letter where they're just they're so pleased with this it's kind of what sally was saying earlier they're so thrilled about this sort of thing reading this book and they want to tell the author how much they like them. No, we don't need that. That's that's not what this is about. Do you want to talk about after they win? Yeah. So one of my favorite parts, other than reading the letters, is after we've selected a winner and a runner-up for each competition level, we have um, we have kind of a day where we honor them um, and they they come to Lincoln. We have a proclamation signing ceremony at the Capitol where the governor last year was the lieutenant governor signed the proclamation and gives the students out um, certificates that they with the governor's signature on it. That Tessa has prepared. Yep. So they <laughs> they get that home. It's a great photo op for parents yeah. and it's just really fun. Sometimes students haven't been to the Capitol before and it's a really fun experience after that we go to bennett martin public library downtown which is just a couple blocks from the capitol and we have a little luncheon where we eat students read their letters and talk about why they wrote them um, they get their prize money and a note a journaling notebook and they just get to have a little downtime with their family and us and um, accept their award and a good meal and a good meal and then the <laughs> last thing which i really enjoy is we go into the jane guest jane pope Geski heritage room at the bennett martin public library which has 
an entire collection of just Nebraska authors and literature. So their letters are signed and then put into the Geske archive as Nebraska authors. And that's a really fun, um, we have a picture up here right now of them signing their letters. They get a little, um, the librarian there gives them a presentation on what the Jane Pope Geske Heritage Room is and why it exists and how their letters are now a part of that you know, long collection of Nebraska authors. So they're Nebraska authors. I mean, that's what they feel. Yeah. yeah. Okay. And um, just the idea that, you know, if they go on to be authors later in life, they, we have this sample <laughs> of their childhood writing um, already archived for them. Yeah. That's cool. I think that's fun. That's pretty exciting that, you know, oh, yeah, that's becoming something. It's not just, oh, I wrote this letter and won this contest. It's it's becoming part of the archive there and, and something really tangible. Yeah. Let me give you a little footnote. Uh, last year, uh, we had some parents come with their with their kids to the Capitol for the, for the uh, uh, ceremony with the governor or the lieutenant governor. And then uh, they have to walk about four blocks or three and a half blocks to uh, Ben and Martin Public Library. Uh, one person didn't have very comfortable shoes on. <laughs> so if you have a student or uh, somebody in your library who is a winner and you know they're going to be there, make sure you tell the parents to wear comfortable shoes to get They will be walking a bit, yes. <laughs> yeah. No, it's a really fun day. We invite the teachers of the winning students as well or whoever was involved in their submission process, that that's a librarian or a teacher, and then their parents are also invited. So it's a really good day. And with this past year was the first year we gave them journals. That kind of links in with what we were saying about journaling, because they probably will want to do that, especially if they aspire to be mm -hmm. a writer. So that was kind of, they really enjoyed that, I think. Mm -hmm. Oh, we should tell them the size of the prizes too. That's just what I was, I was actually going to say. Someone did just ask, what are the awards that you give yeah. out? Yeah. $100 for winners, $50 for the uh, runners up, and then there are gift uh, cards from Francie and Finch. Yep. And there's also, don't we have gift cards from the from the bookstore and Seward as well? No. no? Okay. All right. We don't have for prize money. All right. So, so yeah, they get a monetary prize and then they also get a gift certificate to a Lincoln bookstore that they generously donate for this program. So um, thank you, Francie and Finch, for donating uh, gift cards so they can go find some new books to read. And, and chapters books at Lincoln City Libraries and, and also, uh, yeah, we have I to, forgot we the have lady's name. Oh, you have a page. Oh, good. All right. So we have a... Let's see, during COVID, when we couldn't have that big ceremony in person, we did an online one where the kids had a chance to read their letters for their parents, and it's up on YouTube. And I think we have a little time. I was going to play one of the letters that was really, I mean, they're all really good letters. Are these the videos linked from on the uh, Letters About Literature website too? To yes. So you will get to them? Okay. So you can watch the whole thing on the um, Letters About Literature webpage. It's called the uh, Virtual Awards, and it's, there's a link to YouTube up there. But I'm just going to play. This is our level three alternate win winner from 2021, and they just wrote a really amazing letter. So I hope we can hear this okay. Really a great honor to have been chosen writer up. Um, and I would love to read my letter for you guys. Um, dear John Green, I can't have radio volume on six because it's not a safe number and I will get hurt. I need to make it a volume and number ending in five or zero. What if the devil is in me like my grandma said? Can others sense it? Am I a monster? You may be wondering why I chose to start this letter with these erratic thoughts, but it is because those are just a few of the many thoughts that go through my head every day. While I knew what anxiety and OCD were, I wasn't quite sure I had them. It wasn't until I read your book when I realized I should probably mention it to my parents and therapists. Here it is, a story and struggles and turtles all the way down allowed me to recognize my struggles and I could then start the process of getting help. 
Society has created a stigmatism around anxiety, making it seem like it's not normal or being exaggerated for attention. Because of this, it's often hard to relate to others and understand that it's okay. The Institution of Mental Health explains that for a person with anxiety disorder, the anxiety does not go away and it can get worse over time. The symptoms can interfere with daily activities such as job performance, schoolwork, and relationships. Due to the stigmatism sex society has created, not many people know this. Another common misinterpreted mental disorder that I deal with is OCD or obsessive compulsive disorder. A generalized idea that comes when people think of OCD is tidiness or color coding, etc. But it's more than that. The International OCD Foundation explains OCD as obsessions are, want, are unwanted intrusive thoughts, images, or urges that trigger intensely distressing feelings. Compulsions are behaviors an individual engages in an attempt to rid the obsessions and or decrease his or her distress. My triggers are numbers, double or triple checking things and routines. Every day I fight the compulsions that come with the obsessive thinking of my triggers. I often tend to feel alone in my head because of how society perceives anxiety and OCD. But reading A's story helped me realize I'm not the only one who struggles with them. Growing up, I had friends and family tell me or tell me don't worry so much or you're overreacting. Hearing these were incredibly invalidating and made me feel as if there was something wrong with me and that my thoughts were terrible or stupid. When I read Ace's story, it was an eye-opener. A particular quote in your book that stood out to me because it does a great job explaining what anxiety feels like for me. That quote is, the thing about a spiral is, if you follow it inward, it never actually ends. It just keeps tightening infinitely. For me, anxiety feels just like what this quote is representing. Once my mind starts to worry, it's like a spiral. It gets tighter and tighter and makes me feel trapped. Aza feels this too and it helps me remember I am truly not alone. Her book does a fantastic job of explaining mental illness and the toll it can take on someone. Throughout your book, we see Aza struggle with sharing who she is to David. Like when they first kissed, Aza had a panic attack and left not talking to him for a few days. She was so scared of all the microorganisms and bacteria she received from kissing him that she isolated herself. I too have been there. There was once a time when I was driving around with my boyfriend and he was taking me home, but he went a route he doesn't normally take. And roots are a huge trigger for me, so I started to panic and cry. When he brought me home, I didn't talk to him for the rest of the night. It took me some time, but eventually I wanted to be able to sit down and talk to him about it, just like Aza eventually did. It's because of her that I've made progress with made the progress I have with my mental illness. So I want to thank you for sharing your story with readers. Like I said, it left a significant impact on me and who I am today. Let me say just a few things about that, if I could. Uh, she is in the senior group. Uh, she was the runner up in the senior group. And you'll notice that the letter was not perfect. Like she'd say, uh, a stigma and uh, a stigmatism or whatever she was saying yeah. whatever instead of just stigma so it's not like the letters have to be perfect it's the fact that it's so personal mm -hmm. it's really something so reflective she reflected and perfect. personal yeah with it yeah very moving letter though it's just ah. yeah. <laughs> yeah and it i mean this is what we're talking about today but it is banned books week and i think uh turtles all the way down has been banned and I'm sure yeah. like the effect that book has had on this one teenage yeah. girl yeah. so that's yeah. why it's important to keep books in libraries but yeah that's the kind of letter that really stands out to us um and it doesn't mean that all the letters you know if you don't struggle with mental illness that doesn't mean you don't have a good letter to write yeah. in you um we've had people write about um, the Kite Runner and just yeah. having that book open their eyes to other parts of the world that they've never yeah. thought about or experiences they've never lived. And that is just um, just as impactful to us to read about. So you don't have to have um, some deep, dark secret you're yeah. telling us about. You know, like we, we just want to know your thoughts and um, how this literature has had an effect on your life is what we're really looking for. Let me go back to something Tessa said earlier when she was describing what happens when the kids come together and they have a meal and they read their letters. To me, the strongest part of that whole thing, the meal's great, 
it's fun to take the pictures, but the kids are reading their letters there. And so this year, because they couldn't be there, we invited the winners and runners up from last year, and some of them came to the to the uh, celebration this year. It was kind of nice. We're going to have a platform, however, because some of the younger kids couldn't be seen above, <laughs> above well, the podium. Yeah, the podium was so tall. <laughs> so uh, kids barely we learned that lesson, right? Could see over it. I had to stand on a chair. All right. But yeah, it's really nice for. Um, these students who have written these letters to be able to hear the other letters who have won and mm. listen to the other students, you know, talk about their letters and read them and yeah, just see what these other students are writing about, what they're reading. And that's a, it's a really fun experience. Do we have any questions, Krista? Uh, let's see, we just had the question about the awards. Um, nothing else yet. Um, if anybody does have any questions, yeah, go ahead and type into the question section. If you go to webinar interface, um, if there's anything you want to know more about uh, oh, the yeah. program, how to get it, how to um, get involved, any of the requirements, uh, like I said, all the information is out there on the website. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, Christo, I want to add one more thing, which I forgot. Um, this year, we're making a special effort to try to include blind and visually impaired students. And some of those, some of that effort has included uh, Gabe Kramer, who's head of the Talking Book and Braille service here, right. making contact with a teacher at the school for the blind. I don't know if it'll happen this year and whether we'll have any students submitting them, but we have made that effort. They can use the regular things to submit them. We've talked to uh, Steve Prine at the uh, uh, National Library Service of the Blind Physically Handicapped, and he suggested we not do a special track for them, just make it accessible and let them participate as well. Now, we don't, we don't know yet whether they will be participating, but we're going to take it a step at a time. Probably should have done it earlier, but that's one thing. Sally, thanks for the reminder. Yeah, so we would still like letters um, submitted in PDF format. But if your student needs some sort of accommodation, get a hold of us and talk to us about it, and we'll we'll try to do everything possible to make sure, you know, as many students can submit their letters as possible. Yeah, because really the key is you want some sort of format where it, like you said at the beginning, Tessa, it stays in the exact way that they want it, not a word document that someone could accidentally change something in or something. You know, right. you just need something that it's locked in. <laughs> yeah. So. That's why we love the PDF. Um, it also makes it easy for the judges to be able to, you know, read the same formatted letter um, and not have a lot of different formats to have to jump between so that they can um, score them and evaluate them all on the same, you know, level of things. Mm -hmm. But like I said, if you need um, some sort of accommodation, or if you have questions about whether your letter was submitted or was uploaded into the Dropbox file, just email me. We have my contact information on here. So you can get a hold of me via email, ask, and I will double check that for you immediately. Um, we do have some more resources for you. We've got um, the Center for the Book page that we went through a little bit. We have a resource page where at one point we provided grants for letter writing clinics. We don't provide the grants any longer, but all the information we gathered for those letter writing clinics is still online. Mm -hmm. So if somebody wanted to host one themselves, uh, all that information is available on how they could do it That's and true. what that might look like. We also have social media for, um, a Facebook page for the Nebraska Center for the Book where we post information about the contest and yeah anything like that that people might be interested in about the Center for the Book will go on our social media. I gotta look at some of those. I haven't seen those. That's good. <laughs> yeah. And then these are some of the organizations that help make letters about literature possible. The main one is the Nebraska Center for the Book and the Library Commission. And we do get some funding from Humanities Nebraska and Francie and Finch Bookshop who donates. And we have some other donors that donate money for the prize 
uh, prizes the students get, and Richard um, <laughs> some journals. So we have a lot of people who make this program work. I think we're going to add Lincoln City Libraries to that also because they've hosted yes. the the meal and they do the the tour of the Gesky room and all that sort of thing. And I'd like to thank Tessa publicly for everything she does to get this organized because she gets the letters, she sorts them, she gets them out, make sure they're in the proper order. She, of course, is doing the, the uh, arrangements with Lincoln City Library, all that good stuff. This couldn't work without her. Well, we do have a question here. Um, someone's interested in about what kind of a, what's the competition like, as in uh, specifically, um, how many letters do you usually receive? Um, it depends each year. Um, I think COVID has kind of winnowed our numbers quite a bit, especially with students being home or not in the classroom or not going to their library as much. Sure. So, um, I, yeah, last year, I think each level had about, some of them had more. I think the middle grade usually has more letters. So I think they had about 30 in oh. level two. And then I think Richard said there were 18 in the level three last year. I'm thinking around 20. Yeah, maybe 20 for level one. That's so in the past, good, yeah. those numbers have been closer to 50. So the judges have had to read a lot more letters. But <laughs> Well, hopefully we'll get yeah. more this year. Yeah, now that um, people are getting more um, schools and libraries and the families more um, organized with how they're dealing with living in the pandemic that we're in right now that they know what they can do and how they can get out and I know we've also been trying to reach out more to libraries to um, promote this and to you know that they can be a place you know it's not just it's, it's I think it's been stereotypically thought of as that's a school thing but no yeah you mentioned earlier it could be anything homeschooling libraries yeah <laughs> that's not actually a requirement that it's through the schools no we know a lot of um Public libraries and school libraries have student book clubs, so yeah. that might be a great group to reach out to since you already know they're avid readers and probably have several books that they've already consumed and could have thoughts about. Mm -hmm. But I do think right, doing these letters as a group with, your, with kids is a really great opportunity for them to learn from each other and hear what each one has been impacted by. and yeah mm -hmm. absolutely and i think sally maybe you mentioned uh, teen advisory boards that many libraries are coming up with now are a good resource get and get them involved to see who and you know they're just you know they're specifically for teens but they will know the kids older and younger than them potentially that they could also reach out to and help yes that's a good point thank you get on board with it yeah um, all right yeah, I don't know if we have any other information. Do I don't think I want to say anything. So, no, do you have any other questions or comments? Yeah. Um, I don't see any other questions. Um, if any does any anybody does have any questions, go ahead and get them typed in there so we can get them answered right now if you want to. Um, and of course, you can reach out to Tessa at any time. Um, while I'm waiting to see if anyone does get um, type anything more in, uh, we just just have some thank yous coming in. And uh, hello, Richard. People remembering. Hello. That. <laughs> yes, I'm still alive. <laughs> well, yeah. <laughs> um, we are recording the show, and the recording will be available um, by the end of the day tomorrow at the latest. Uh, it'll be on our Encompass Live page and um, on the Letters About Literature page. Right now, it links to this session to sign up for today's show, but I assume you'll switch that over to when I have the recording up there, Tessa. Um, and the slides will be available as well. I'll get them from her so we can have that available. Um, for you if you want any of that for your um, reference when you're uh, working on this or helping any of the students in your area submit their letters. All right, I'm going to pull presenter control back to my screen now so I can show you where all of this will be there we go. on our website. There it is. There you go. So here's the session page for today's show. This will be um, uh, at made a um, on our recordings page. If you um, go to our main page, we have our current shows, and then our archives are linked right here at the underneath all of our upcoming shows. 
and the most recent ones always at the top of the page. Um, so today's will be right here. Um, everyone who attended today's show and registered for today's show will get an email from me. I will also push out on our social media. We have a Facebook page for Encompass Live. If you like to use Facebook, give us a like over there. We post reminders. Here's a reminder about today's show. When recordings are available, we post on here. So um, that'll be noticed, notified there. Uh, we do have a hashtag Encump Live we use. I also push it out into Twitter and um, as well when it's ready. So keep an eye there if you want to. Um, I'll mention here there is a search feature if you want to look for any other previous episodes. See what we've done, if we've done something on a topic you might be interested in, you can search our archives. You can search the full show archives or just the most recent 12 months if you just want something recently done. Um, that is because this is our full show archives and I will not scroll all the way down because it's it's too long. Um, going back to when Encompass Live premiered, which was January 2009. Um, so what are we going on here? 10, 12, some lots and lots of sessions here. Um, we will always have them on here. Um, we All of our recordings are, are housed right now on our YouTube channel for the Library Commission. Um, but just do pay attention to the original broadcast date of anything. Uh, some shows will stand the test of time, still be good, valid, useful information, but some things will become old or outdated. And the information will be um, if they're different now or services or products might not exist anymore, um, things may have changed drastically, links might not work, you never know. Um, so just pay attention. But, you know, we are librarians and this is one thing we do is keep things for available for historical purposes and we will continue doing that. Um, I did mention uh, on our session for letter, we do have a link on the session page to the Letters About Literature website. So you'll be able to just pop right over there um, from when you get the information about the recording um, for all the information, anything you need to participate in the program. So that's it for today. Any last words, Tessa, Richard, or Sally? Or Just a reminder that the competition opens October 1st this year, not November 1st. So you have an extra month for your, your submission. Mm -hmm. You can wait till the end of December to submit your letter. Yeah. Don't let December go by without submitting. Send in those letters. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So look for that coming up in the uh, week and a half from now. Just, October is coming soon. <gasps> I know. All right. Thank you, everybody, for being here today. Um, and I um, thank you, uh, Tessa, Richard, and Sally. I'm glad we were able to get this organized and get you all on to talk about um, letters about literature. Hopefully, a lot more letters this year. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Thank you, everybody, for being here for today's show. Um, I hope you join us next week when it is, it's the last Wednesday of the month. Ah, September's almost over, uh, which means it is Pretty Sweet Tech Day, uh, last Wednesday of the month. Uh, Amanda Sweet, our technology innovation librarian, comes in the show to talk about something techie related. And she's going to teach us about, <coughs> excuse me, programming a robot using voice commands. Hello. So, um, if you want to learn how to do that. Robot. <laughs> I just said first you have to have a robot. Well, yeah, we have, yeah, we can get some of the, you can, you can borrow them from the Library Commission um, if you're a, a Nebraska library, so. <laughs> and she will have some Halloween themed um, resources, things we're talking about, because it is right, um, come, you know, you want, want to plan for that a little um, now. All right, so please do sign up for that and any of our other upcoming shows. Note October 1st, or October 5th. Um, we do not have the show. We always take the week off for the Nebraska Library Association annual conference. Uh, people are more involved in that. So there will not be an Encompass Live after next week's. Um, we'll be back the week, after, the week after that. So thank you everybody for being here and hope we'll see you on a future episode of Encompass Live. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Thank you. Bye.